So here's the problem with this Pontiac Grand Am. The key is stuck, and it's stuck in the on position. Just past start. And just short of starting, actually starting the starter up. It's right there, and it won't go no matter what you do. You jiggle the jiggle the, the shifter. Play with the steering column all you want. It's there. So the first thing we're going to do here is disconnect the battery. 8 millimeter. Always want to do this when you're working around an airbag. And besides, this little problem here is going to drain the battery down because everything's on, you know, including some lights here, parking lights. So I'll get this disconnected and uh, see what's going on here. Okay, so we have to take off the steering column covers here. There's two of them, and it's a T. Torx T25. Three of them underneath here. Just gotta get the T25 in there. Turn them out. Okay, we have three of those out, then we'll separate these two halves. Okay, so we took the top cover off here, slipped off. Now the difficulty seems to be to get this bottom cover off. On this side we have to deal with the the lever for the tilt. Hmm. So it looks like it's going to have to kind of be pulled over this over this key switch somehow. It's getting dark in here, but I managed to pull this up and over the key. Get this out of the way. Looks like it's made. Looks like the handle on this is... Well, I guess it's going to stay right there. Yes. You can get in here and see that screwdriver. Okay, right in here, see my screwdriver. And when you push it in there, pull out and there comes the lock cylinder. And this one has an electrical connector on it that you have to just lift the tab on and pull out. Here with the switch out what became apparent pretty quick is it operates now. Accessory off on key out. Okay I have the battery disconnected. You can see now the solenoid is out, the plunger's out. See the other end of it we in here by my finger. You know, it's, it's, it's preventing the switch from activating, the ignition switch from activating. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take out this solenoid interlock here that mounts underneath the ignition switch and examine this. I'm suspicious that this can be could be involved in our problem. This is a 5.5 millimeter, so here's that rare case where you can use that 5.5 seldom used socket. So with that out, and there's a little kind of a plastic spring-loaded section on there, and this solenoid pulls right out. And see the action on here already isn't right. There's a little piece on here that's not moving. And we're going to disconnect this and take a closer look at it. Okay, now as you can see, getting a needle nose in here. I can turn the ignition switch now. I'm going to put it back where it was because that's how this fits in, how the solenoid fits in there. I think it's kind of got to fit into the on position. Okay, so let's take a close look at this solenoid interlock switch. If you'll notice, as the plunger is activated, as it's pulled in, and I believe this would be the non-interlocked position, this little metal lever is loose. It's not coming along with it. If you look at it, it's knurled here. Knurled material right there. That's supposed to be press fit on there. And the press is just basically worn out. Okay, so as you look at this now, this is the position it's supposed to be in. This little flag. You can see this arc on here. This is where the uh, ignition fits in. Ignition switch fits in the body of it. And so when it's in the 
out position when the solenoid is deactivated, it's going to block that from turning. When it's activated, this is operating properly. It's going to clear this arc right here and allow it to freely turn. So we've got to get it back into that position. What I've decided to do is score this of a blade, sharp utility knife here. I'm going to score this metal on here a number of times. And see if by so doing we can keep this from moving. Okay, I can already feel a difference. I'm going to score it a little more. And then to finish it off, I'm going to put a drop of super glue in there. And then we'll test it, let it dry and test it, and see if it's going to stay there. And if it does, we won't have to replace the part, which I found hard. I, I'm not unable to find it at this point. It's out there somewhere, no doubt. Probably a dealership or an exorbitant cost. I'm going to continue to do it this way. And, um, and then I'll show you the results here and see if it's going to stay in place. So just scoring it alone, I've got it to stay in there pretty good. Still though, you know, it can be backed off. And I'm going to uh, add a drop of glue to it to make sure it stays there. Okay. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on this little lever, on this little flag or actuator, whatever you want to call it. It's holding in there. I have every bit of confidence in this repair. I've done this sort of thing before on uh, parts that are under even more stress and they've held up. So I'm going to go install it now. Okay, so we're slipping our solenoid back in. There it is. It's our little 5.5 millimeter screw. And our connector. Now remember when you put the ignition switch back in, it has to be in the the on position. Not the start position, but the on position. And our little spring-loaded catch has to be able to be depressed all the way in. And of course the ignition, I haven't touched the ignition uh, switch itself, so that shouldn't be a factor. There it is. It's back in. Of course we're not going to be able to take it out until we, because the solenoid is actually not activated. I can't show all this, I don't think, with the number of hands that I have. I'm going to depress this same time turn the key. There it is. Got the key finally turned. Now it comes. Okay, so we plugged our security key back in. So at this point, now that the key is out and it's back in normal operating condition, you are putting the covers back on. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I used a file to open this out so that the uh, tilt lever would fit back over it back through it because they made it the slot so narrow she couldn't get it off. You know, I'm not worried about that little bit of cosmetics there. Well, it's one half. And so we'll just fit the top half on and then put the three screws back in. Pretty much call this a day. Okay, so we're wrapping this up. We snap these two pieces back together. They just snap together and then just ratchet the three. T25s. Okay, put it all back together. Shut it down with the key. Back in business. Thanks for watching this video.